Is now a good time to buy a house? Will the market be crashing anytime soon? Where are exactly our interest rates going? I'll be answering these questions and more coming up. I'll also be giving some 2025 predictions. That's right. I can't believe it. We're getting towards the end of the year here. So we are going to be starting to talk about 2025. I'm going to be going through the data at the national level and then also talking about data for Oklahoma and then drilling down a little further into some of the rural areas of Oklahoma. You're not going to want to miss this, so stay tuned. <laughs> hey, everybody. Stacey Hesser here, your favorite realtor in all of Oklahoma. And I am a licensed realtor here in Oklahoma. So I have access to uh, Tulsa MLS, which pretty much covers about half of the state. It's almost anything from I-35 over to the border of Arkansas. I also have access to the national data. So I'm really able to drill in and get some really good data on what exactly is happening in the market today and also give some predictions for what's where we think the market's going to be going for 2025. So I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> I came from the corporate world of finance and then also contract uh, management with a very large corporation. So this is my opportunity to really geek out on numbers. <laughs> The feds did another rate drop going from 4.75% to 4.5%. So what does this mean for you, the consumer? Unfortunately, not a whole lot. Contrary to belief, you would think that because the feds are dropping their rate that the consumers are going to be able to experience some rate cuts as well. It doesn't quite work that way as with anything with our governments. <laughs> There's a trickle down effect that usually is involved and it just, it just takes time. Unfortunately, interest rates have been creeping back up despite these rate cuts by the feds. And we are now sitting in the high sixes. So this is something that you can buy down though. I honestly haven't had a customer close at this rate for a while because they've always done a rate buy down. Most of my clients are in the high fives because of this. And um, it really does help save you money on your uh, monthly payments. So. Big news, of course, was our election. Trump has, is going to be taking office in January. Last time Trump was in office, we experienced some of the lowest interest rates that we ever have in the history of real estate. The Mortgage Bankers Association has been experiencing a slowdown in their mortgage applications, mostly because they haven't had a lot of refinances. They've definitely seen a downward slide over the last few weeks. So mortgage applications are down. However, despite rising interest rates, home prices continue to go up. So this is something that everybody's asking about. Is there going to be a crash? Are we in a bubble? No, I really don't think we are. But what I do see us uh, experiencing in the future is a slow downward trend. I'm honestly really surprised to see that home prices are continuing to trend up, although it's not nearly as steep of a climb as what we've been having. It's definitely tapering off. So if we're on a roller coaster, I would say we're kind of getting into this section right here where we're getting ready to experience a little bit of a down. The average homeowner, this is shocking to me, the average homeowner currently has $147,000 in equities. With all of these rising prices on homes, the homeowners themselves are really experiencing more equity today than they have ever had. Is it like that in Oklahoma? Not quite. <laughs> We're, we'll get into that a little bit later in the video. But there's a reason why Oklahomans don't necessarily have that much equity. And it's because our home prices just aren't that high. So we'll talk about that. Home affordability continues to be a challenge for the nation because of these rising prices, though, which really kind of breaks my heart. The The average age of the first time home buyer right now is sitting at 38 Again, another record high. But know that in Oklahoma, it's it's not that high. Median home price for America, for the nation right now, is sitting at, drum roll please, $404,500. $404,500. That's up there, folks. <laughs> I'm in the business and I don't even want to be dealing with a mortgage that high. So 
a uh, little shocking that that is the actual median price in America right now. It's no wonder that the first time home buyer is the age of 38 because you, your salaries just aren't there yet. Talking about Oklahoma, I hate to keep beating up to Oklahoma, but the, you know, it's my wheelhouse. It's where I'm at. It's where I specialize in. So Oklahoma real estate just simply is not that high. So. At the national level, inventory continues to rise, meaning there are more houses that are available on the market today. And I believe we're sitting at 100, no, excuse me, 1.39 million homes that are currently for sale. This is an increase of 1.5% uh, year over year. So a bit of an increase in the amount of homes that are available for you home buyers. Now, foreclosures. So this was another key indicator after uh, COVID that we really thought we'd see a glut of foreclosures hit the market. But somebody came up with the wild idea of a forbearance instead. And what I can tell you is that forbearances are really keeping a lot of homes out of a foreclosure status, which I am loving. We have been seeing a little bit of an uptick on forbearances, and we have also seen a small uptick in actual foreclosures. So in my area specifically, we have three just what we call distressed homes that would be uh, in the hands of a mortgage company that are trying to sell them. So three, before COVID, I want to say we usually had anywhere from 10 to 15 at any point in time. So only having three in our market is pretty, pretty awesome. I don't know. I don't know. It's not awesome for those three people, but it is it is good for our market that we are keeping those foreclosures out. So I'm very glad to, to see that. That's all I really have for the national level. So I've, I've been alluding to several things on the Oklahoma level. So let's start talking about that. According to the Oklahoma State Treasurer, spending is starting to level out. Dude, I am right next to some train tracks where I'm at. And do you hear this? This is... This happens at like three o'clock in the morning. I've learned it's two longs, one short and a long, but there is one guy, I swear to God, three o'clock in the morning is his time and he just lets loose on that horn. It's annoying. <laughs> the spending in Oklahoma is starting to level out, but it does remain high. Comparing year over year data, we are still higher than what we've been. So there's still plenty of spending happening. At the national level, un unemployment is currently sitting at 4.1%. In the state of Oklahoma, we are trending at 3.4%. 4 is not, not a bad rate, but I am getting kind of concerned because it keeps climbing. Not much and very slow, but it is continuing to creep up. Oil and gas production is down. Like I said, motor vehicles is up at 4.3%. Enough about the basic economy of what's going on in the, na uh, the nation and Oklahoma. Let's start talking about real estate. So what is happening in the real estate market today in Oklahoma? Let's open up our market analysis here. I'm going to be pulling data for the full MLS, which will be, um, like I said, pretty much anything from I-35 over to the border of Arkansas and all the way up to Kansas and down to Texas. So we are going to talk about, we're going to go five years back and we're going to discuss new listings first. Is that right? Yes. New listings. So October, we had 2,471. October of last year, 2,190. So this was new listings at this point in time, uh, this year and last year, which is an increase of 12.8%. So we are seeing an uptick. This is trending with the national data. We are seeing an uptick of listings in the market. So closings, 1,632 for October this year. 1,503 October of last year. So an increase of 8.6%. So closings are up, but not as high as the new listings. So we're not closing as many houses, which means that we are increasing our inventory here in the state of Oklahoma too. All right, what's going under contract? Pending sales, 1,577 versus... 
versus 1,395 last year. That's an increase of 13%. So we are finally seeing the pending sales going up. It's higher than closed. So more things are going under contract. A sales price. We are on median sales price. I don't really like talking about median sales price, but it's flat 240. Let's look at average. I like averages better. Average. 288,649 versus, like I said, the national level is at 404,500. And then last year we were at 286,86. But an increase overall of 2.8%. So we are continuing to see that rise. Days on market, average days, we're sitting at 61 now. An increase of 24%, 52 last year. No, 49 last year. Sorry about that. So yeah, definitely seeing an increase on days on market. Just popping in to look at median, we're sitting at 29 versus uh, 19. So pretty dramatic increase there. That's interesting. I have to think about what that really means. If that middle number is at 29. But you can see over here earlier before COVID where we used to sit. So we're really kind of getting back to... Uh, I dare say a normal market with our days on market, that frenzy is finally going away. I'm liking it. It's uh, I I felt like boy in the in <laughs> 21 and 22 when you had that extreme low there. I mean that gun. It was just it was wild. Those were wild times, man. Okay, let's take a look at this is a this is a new stat for me. So the percent of original price. So what people actually paid versus what they listed at. So this one's really an interesting stat. So looking at the average, we're at 94.5% versus where we were last year at 95.4. So people are paying less, less than asking by about five and a half percent. So that is in the state though. That's the state. Wait till we get into the more rural areas. It's more interesting. So let's drill into Carter County. Let's flip our stats over. So we're going to go through the same stats again. Let's go ahead and get into, let's get into new listings first. So we've got 72 new listings, an increase of 56.5% year over year. Last year, we only had 46 new listings hitting the market. So if you're a seller right now, you need to make sure that you've got everything as perfect as possible. Closings were flat. So we had 41 and 41. So not an increase in closings. We have an increase in listings, not an increase in closings. Pending sales, we are finally increasing. So 40 versus 30 last year, an increase of 33%. So that's kind of, that's good news. That means more people are starting to go under contract. People are feeling a little more comfortable with the interest rates and where we are today. Sales prices, wah, wah, wah. This is for those rural communities. And you can see we have hit a peak and we are moving into a valley here. So a decline of 17%. This, this however, does not mean that the market is crashing. I, want to, I really want to emphasize this. More of my buyers right now are just simply looking for lower priced homes. Okay. This does not mean the market's crashing. This just means that more of the lower priced homes are currently selling. So days on market, we're sitting at 61, an increase of 8.9% versus 56 last year. Uh, and again, looking at the percent of sales price. So 90.3. So that's about, that's almost a 10% reduction versus uh, what people are listing at and what they're actually closing out, what they're actually selling for. After looking at all of that, is now a good time to buy? Heck yes, especially in those rural markets where you're seeing uh, that list to sales price ratio being almost 10% down. That's that's pretty dang low, man. I don't even, I don't even, so it's, it's really just showing you that sellers are definitely uh, looking to negotiate and they're nervous about keeping their house on the market that long. So they're really working with buyers to sell. On the flip side of that, is now a good time to list your house? Yes. What I can tell you from my personal experience on showings is these homes all, none of them are perfect, if you will. They all need a little bit of work. So if you have a good house and you're willing to put in some elbow grease to clean it up and make it look really good and make it show really well, 
then you're definitely going to have an easier time getting your house under contract. A good home priced well is always going to be de uh, something that's very desirable in our market. Is the market going to crash anytime soon? No, I don't think so. None of the predictors that are out there for 2025 are showing that we are going to have some kind of a crash. Um, but we are going to just probably see a little bit of a, of a, we're seeing that slowdown and we're going to probably see that continue to, to be the, uh, ongoing trend for at least the next year. Uh, I don't think we're going to see anything as dramatic as what we saw through the COVID time. And I think things are just finally leveling out, but note that I'm saying level out, not crash. That goes for interest rates. You may see them start to tick down again. I would be shocked if I saw them go over 7%. Um, but they're probably going to remain steady somewhere in the sixes pretty much throughout 2025. Inventory, in my opinion, is probably going to continue to grow and we, which just gives buyers more of an opportunity to find their perfect place. If you like this video, please be sure to give me a thumbs up. Man, I totally appreciate it. And if you have any questions, please be for, comment. I'd love to hear from you guys. So I really try to make an effort to reply to any comments that I receive, even if it's something so crazy like, I don't even know. I've had some doozies, boy, like everybody in Ardmore's on crack or something. It's, I'll reply to you too. <laughs> but if you're moving into the area and you're interested in real estate in Oklahoma, man, totally hit me up. I would love to hear from you. I'd love to have a conversation with you about what it's like purchasing a house here in the state of Oklahoma because it is a little bit different. And I would love to be that realtor of choice for you and just be able to help you. If you're looking to sell a house in Oklahoma, call me on that front too. Like I said, I can pull data for much of the state. And if I don't have access to the data that's in your specific area, chances are I know somebody that can. So hit me up, baby. Isn't there a song for that? I don't know. Hit me, baby, one more time. I, maybe I'm thinking, I'm, I don't know. I think I'm having a Britney Spears like anyway so if you are looking to purchase a house in Oklahoma I'm going to have a link to what to know before buying a home in Oklahoma be sure you check that out like I said real estate in Oklahoma is a little bit different